Welcome, delicious friend. They say that fallen London is a city of a thousand stories, and they'd be right. And I am here to share those stories with you. So sit back, pour yourself a glass of Broken Giant 1844, and enjoy. It began in 1861, when the consort of the traitor Empress, or her enduring majesty, as she prefers to be known, had taken ill. The Empress was unlike many royals, for she loved her consort dearly. Their marriage was a happy one, their lives almost perfect. And yet this sickness struck from nowhere and threatened to claim the consort's life. That is when the Empress was approached by a group of strange hooded figures. They called themselves the Masters of the Bazaar, and they claimed that they could save the consort's life, if only the Empress would give up her city, London. She agreed, and so, on Valentine's Day of 1862, London was dragged underground by a vast horde of bats, though some would say the city was stolen. This was the fall, and why did the Masters choose Valentine's Day to drag the city away? In the deepest matters of the bazaar, look to love always. Following the fall, London found itself in the Neath, a vast underground cavern one mile below the earth. London herself underwent several changes as this happened. The Thames was redirected into hell itself, and was henceforth known as the Stolen River. Parts of the suburbs were lost to the wide and dark Untersee, and those that survived were cut off. Now they are called Mutton Island, where strange rituals happen around the well at night. The streets were renamed and the old signs confiscated. Do not be caught with one. In the south of the city there was a new area, made from an old one. The Forgotten Quarter, the remains of the fourth city, London's forebear, where the devils have their sport. Finally, and most importantly, London became host to the Echo Bazaar itself. A strange place, where all are free to hawk their wares. Many speak as if it is a living thing. Women call it he, men call it she, but no one really knows. The mysteries and nature of the bazaar itself are a story for another time. And so London found itself in this vast cavern, the Neath, untouched by sunlight, though some say that far to the east there is an island where the sun's rays still blanket the world. Instead, the Neath is lit by the gas lamps of Mr. Fires, one of the aforementioned masters of the bazaar, though many Neath dwellers may tell you that we burn sinners for light instead. Newcomers like yourself arrive here through the Cumian Canal, an ingenious system of locks moving through both natural and unnatural caverns all the way back to the surface. Some arrive from the surface to pursue agendas in the great game, some come to kill a legend, some come for vengeance, some come to win their heart's desire, and some come to take part in a heist that will be remembered for all time. Though, for many, the trip to the Neath is one way. For sunlight is dangerous to Neath dwellers, and those aren't the ones who have had the bad fortune to die once already. Ah yes, death is not permanent down here in the Neath. Many do get up from dying, dust themselves off, and mutter about the inconvenience of it all. But once you die in the Neath, you can never return to the surface, unless by some miracle you can afford a certain brand of exquisitely expensive cider, or find some other form of true immortality. Otherwise, you're down here for good. Now why is this? Well, the story of the bazaar holds many of the answers, but for now all I shall say is that the Neath avoids the judgement of the stars. It's been 30 years since the fall, and London has largely adapted. The rooftops have been converted into a haunt for criminals and urchins we call the Flit, where the Topsy King holds court. We share our city with the eldritch rubbery men, and the bandage nearly dead of the tomb colonies, the talking Rattus Faber, or as some call them, the LBs. Great golems known as clay men carry out labour in the factories, and the unfinished men, the clay men with something missing, often work as enforcers for the city's less reputable elements. We even have cordial relations with the devils, barring that nasty business in 1868. For you see, Londoners, or, well, the British in general, can adapt to anything. So welcome, delicious friend, to our city. I do hope you join me for another story soon, but for now, enjoy the city of 1,000 choices. Oh, and before you go, there is one last piece of advice for you. Whatever you do, do not fall in love. <laughs>